This is episode six of the Turn Stalls and Spins series. Today we're looking at accelerated stalls. Accelerated stalls and secondary stalls, while accurate descriptions, are just names made up to further scare pilots. Like all other maneuvers, they're caused by pilots whether they realize it or not. Some accelerated stalls are not only done on purpose, but aggravated with a healthy dose of rudder. This is called a snap roll. And if you need more violence in your flying, then perhaps you should become an aerobatic pilot. Now let's go flying to understand this better. Strap into my office. Oh wait, before we go flying, let me go back and revisit some of the comments, questions, and feedback from episode one, where I talked about and demonstrated that the elevator is the flight control that turns the airplane. I wanna thank everybody for all the messages they sent, even the ones to my personal inbox, filled with four letter words, thank you. But let's talk about it a bit more. Let's do it in the context of the airplane I'm flying for this series. This is an extra 300L. It's a purpose-built, high-performance aerobatic plane. It's a little different than the Cessna. Well, <laughs> it's a lot different than the Cessna or Piper or Cirrus most of you are flying in your day-to-day -day general aviation uh, type flying. This airplane has basically three things that are very, very different and enhance its aerobatic capabilities. One is the wing is a symmetrical wing. Most of the wings on the planes you're flying have a curved top and a flatter bottom. The wing is mounted to the airplane with zero degrees angle of incidence. If you're not sure what angle of incidence is, go Google that, you'll understand, but it's the angle the wing is mounted to the airplane. The third thing is there is no dihedral. This wing is completely flat wingtip to wingtip. All of these contribute to the fact that this airplane has a very neutral set of stability characteristics and really makes an ideal platform to demonstrate the intentions and purpose of this program. If you're in an airplane that has angle of incidence or a few degrees of angle of incidence, it's always in a positive angle of attack and they do this so that the fuselage seems to fly a bit more level in relation to the horizon. That's why many people are seeing the illusion that simply banking the airplane makes a turn. That's actually not true and again if you have more feedback put them down below in the comments. Let's talk about it some more. And now, let's strap into my office. We know that if you gently and slowly stall the airplane, it will stall a 1G. What about stalling aggressively? What if we rapidly change the angle of attack so quickly that the airflow cannot stay sticky to the wing, and the airflow simply separates at a higher than normal speed, which will also happen at a higher than normal G load? So here we are at 120 knots. I've reset the G meter. Let's see how many Gs and how hard I can pull to stall this airplane from 120 knots. So I pulled very aggressively, and I saw three Gs, just over three Gs, when the airplane actually hit the stall buffer. An excellent demonstration of accelerated stall. For instance, if you snatch the stick or the yoke back in a panic during a startle and snatch response, you might stall the airplane at any airspeed without realizing what you're doing. Now, is it possible to aggravate an accelerated stall? Well, of course, a pilot can aggravate any maneuver, and any maneuver can aggravate a pilot. I'm going to do another accelerated stall from 120 knots, and this time, at the moment of the stall buffet, I'm going to stomp on the rudder, and we're going to do something called a snap roll. Now, a snap roll is not a roll where we use the ailerons. It's a roll driven by the tail of the airplane, elevator and rudder. It's actually exactly like a spin, except it's done from an accelerated stall at a high rate of airspeed. And, well, <laughs> if you like violence in your flying, you're going to love this. So. I'm going to pull up aggressively, stall the airplane, stomp in the rudder, recovery, just like any other spin. Opposite rudder, unload the stick. Are we ready to watch the snap roll? Now, I let that one go around a couple times for effect, but you see the results. You can stall at any airspeed and any attitude. We've all heard of the secondary stall, where you recover from a stall too aggressively, in effect, you load the airplane up and it stalls again. So let's take a look at that from a normal upright stall. I'm going to purposely try to recover too fast and get a secondary stall buffet. And of course, the way to recover is to simply unload the stick and let the wing fly again. So, pull the nose up, let's get a stall to happen. And there's the stall. Now, I unload the stick and then I get aggressive with it and I pull the nose up too quick, there's a secondary stall buffet. When I pull up again, there's a tertiary stall buffet. And there's a, I don't know what the word is before, but there was a fourth one. You get the idea. In recovering from a stall, you have to be gentle. Let the airspeed build before you pull the nose back up to level flight. You have to let the wings start flying again. 
You can stall the airplane at any attitude. You can even stall the airplane with the nose pointed straight down. So I'm going to do a hammerhead, and I'm going to purposely stall the airplane on the downline. Ready, set, here we go. All right, pull vertical. Hit the upline. And we'll just let the airplane run out of airspeed. And at the very top of the maneuver, I'm going to kick in the rudder, pivot the airplane. Now I'm on the down. I'm going to pull power so I have a little bit of time. Now if I try to recover too quick, there's a stall bucket. I recover again. There's a stall bucket. We're going straight down. We're stalling like crazy. Now I'm going to gently pull the nose up. And notice no stall that time. You have to let the airplane develop airspeed, or if you pull too hard, you're simply going to stall the airplane again.